The Resident Evil franchise has never been one to skimp out on the lore. Every game is littered with files that detail the background on various creatures, the history behind the motives of the characters, and smaller details that help build out the world. This video is dedicated to those of you who may have skipped over these files. Starting with Resident Evil Zero, Connor and I will be detailing the lore behind every enemy in the Resident Evil games in order of appearance. All the info in this video is gathered from files in the game, the Resident Evil wiki, evilresource.com, and the official English strategy guide. Spoilers ahead, obviously. So let's start this thing off with the enemy that you're not at all surprised to see here, the zombie. In Resident Evil Zero, there are a total of 113 zombies. They are relatively weak, but can become dangerous in large numbers. While there are many variants like train passengers, cooks, umbrella staff, and many others, the most dangerous one is surprisingly the train conductor. This guy still retains his memories of the layout of his train and will follow the player from car to car if not killed right away. With all these different variations of zombies, it really makes them sympathetic villains and gives you a glimpse into the life that Umbrella stole from them. But I still can't quite figure out what those naked zombies were up to before they turned. The zombies are created from the T-Virus, an Umbrella biological weapon that mutates humans into the undead. But wait! These aren't exactly classic zombies. These zombies are actually still alive. You see, the T-Virus works by assuming control over the cellular structure of its host. It's basically like the T-Virus is to the Power Rangers as a zombie is to the Megazord. The interference of the T-Virus on human mechanical operations is why they slowly stagger around and suddenly leap at their prey if it gets too close. The means of reanimation are not always so smooth either. Some zombies' legs were not properly integrated by the virus and are resigned to dragging themselves across the floor. So the host is technically still alive, but the side effects of the virus turn the skin gangrenous and induce a cannibalistic hunger essentially reinforcing those classic zombie attributes. It seems like the only positive from getting infected with the T-Virus is a boost in physical strength making them hard to put down. So I guess you have that going for you zombies. There are only two ways to kill a zombie. First, by blowing its head apart, or after shooting it enough times it will fall down and be surrounded by a pool of its own blood. In the Resident Evil universe, zombies do not exist in pop culture. There's no George A. Romero Living Dead films. The killers are eating the flesh of the people they murder. No Walking Dead. <laughs> and no Last of Us. This is why the characters unapologetically refer to them as zombies rather than Walker or Clicker or Shambler or some other bullshit synonym for zombie. There was this incident involving zombies. Zombies and monsters. When researchers at Umbrella began testing the effects of the T-Virus on humans, they were inspired by Haitian folklore in which necromancers used reanimated corpses for slave labor, calling them zombies. Next up, we have the leech. The leeches were created by Dr. Marcus when he injected them with Umbrella's very first discovery, the progenitor virus. The unique combination of a leech genes and the progenitor virus developed into the T-virus that we all know and love. These leeches mutated from the virus, having grown in size with larger and sharper teeth. They have a strong bloodlust and are responsible for spreading the T-virus on the Ecliptic Express, Umbrella Training Facility, and the Spencer Mansion. Whenever you encounter the leeches endgame, they will be plentiful in number and extremely satisfying to squish. The leeches are surprisingly high functioning, learning to work together to form humanoid shapes. These humanoid leech amalgamations are known as Mimicry Marcus. Since Dr. Marcus was their creator, a large brood will coalesce and take on his appearance, even mimicking the texture of his skin. This kind of seems like a weird imprinting situation. Are you my mother? But when the player gets close, 
their facade will fall. Lacking bone structure, they appear floppy and can stretch their limbs for a ranged attack. Be careful, these guys deal a lot of damage. They are also weak to fire, so it's best to use napalm rounds or molotovs to take them out. And when defeated, they may explode for a wide AoE, releasing leeches everywhere. To cap off the train section, we have the Cerberus. Only found on the Ecliptic Express throughout the entire game, these are Dobermans that have been infected with, you guessed it, the T-Virus. They are extremely agile and will tear you apart without a second thought. Experimentation on Doberman canines came about because of their history of military service and obedience. When exposed to the T-Virus, their skin began exhibiting necrosis, exposing bone and muscle. The mutation also heightened their aggression and reduced their sense of fear. This meant that they would not be startled by things like gunfire. When observing the Cerberus in action, Umbrella researchers found that they attack differently depending on their numbers. Alone, the Cerberus will run circles around their target before pouncing for an attack, whereas the pack will attack one after another, constantly inflicting damage on their target. Without a common enemy, a pack of Cerberus will resort to devouring each other to satiate their bloodlust. Umbrella considered these BOWs a success and suitable for mass production to be sold to the military. They are also very cheap to produce, opposed to enemies like the Hunters, due to being derived from an existing animal. Once they escaped from the Umbrella Lab in the Arclay Mountains, Cerberuses or Cerberi became the main transmitter of the T-Virus throughout the surrounding region, and the unsuspecting city of a raccoon. Side note, the song that plays when you encounter these in the game is titled Zombie Dog, which is a completely separate enemy found only in other Resident Evil games. You'll have to subscribe to the channel for a future video discussing that when we do a Code Veronica entry in this lore series. And here we are, the first boss in the game, B.O.W. Type Y139, a big ol' scorpion named Stinger, and you guessed it, he's also infected with the T-Virus. This scorpion has mutated and grown to 3 meters in length, gained strength and armor, and pincers that can cut through steel. Stinger can attack with these pincers and also with its, well, Stinger. Its only weak spot is its head, making the hunting gun an ideal weapon of choice against it. Stinger has 500 HP compared to Billy's 250 and Rebecca's 150. Resident Evil loves their Hitchcock inspirations, and the Krill enemies are yet another reference to the Ator filmmaker. How do you do? My name is Alfred Hitchcock and I would like to tell you about my forthcoming lecture. It is about the birds and their age-long relationship with man. They are fast and smaller than your average target, making them hard to hit. Best to just run past them instead of wasting precious ammo. Scavengers by nature, these crows have become infected by the T-Virus from feasting on the carrion of victims of the bioweapon. Mutations from the virus have made these birds larger in size with a new hunger for live prey. Much like the Cerberus that hunt in packs, these crows will mainly attack as a flock, engulfing their victims in pecking beaks and claiming a banquet for the entire murder. That is, until the next one. The plague crawlers are the result of various insects being experimented on with the T-Virus. Back in 1978, before Marcus began testing on humans, he used insects. That means that these were the very first B.O.W.s. He was number one! As experimentation on these insects progressed, their lack of intelligence was deemed too major of a flaw for research to continue. Instead of destroying them, the plague crawlers were sealed away. Since they've been left unchecked and allowed to mutate for 20 years, they have grown greatly in size. Significant mutations include strong armor with long pincers that they use to kill their prey. Plague crawlers prefer to hunt in dark, damp places, cornering their prey in vulnerable areas. This allows them to attack at close range without being hindered by their limited eyesight. Although most were killed when the Umbrella Training Facility was destroyed, their research data was sold on the black market 
and would reappear again in the Dark Side Chronicles. The boss you fight in the Umbrella Training Facility is a giant centipede known as Centurion. As we know, Dr. Marcus did experiments with the T-Virus on bugs, but no evidence was found to suggest that he did any testing on centipedes. It was not intended to be a B.O.W., and was just a normal centipede exposed to the virus. Like other creatures exposed to the T-Virus, it is very large and very aggressive. It has 600 HP and is 10 meters in length. Judging how it reacted to Rebecca, it has clearly developed a taste for humans. Always a classic, up next we have the giant spider enemy. While similar to the web spinners found in later entries, the giant spider is completely unrelated being one of Marcus's early tests with the T-Virus. They exhibit the trademark upgrades in size and aggression. Like normal spiders, they can stick to walls and ceilings. There's not too much info on the spiders, which makes me sad. Because you know, Spider-Man. Undoubtedly, the most glorious and beautiful enemy in RE0 is the Eliminator. Once Marcus got tired of testing the virus on bugs, he decided to move on to more advanced animals. When Marcus infected some monkeys, they eventually mutated into the Eliminators. The experiment with the monkeys was initially deemed a success. The brain cells of the monkeys remained largely intact after infection. This allowed for the execution of commands and subordination to their creator. Time took its toll, however, and the monkey experiment failed. The virus began to degrade the intelligence of the monkeys, and mass production of them ceased. The remaining Eliminators were kept in the facility to rot. Eliminators are very fast and will run circles around Billy and Rebecca before they even get a shot off. It is hinted that since these Eliminators have been deprived of sustenance, they are not at full strength. That may be the only reason Rebecca and Billy are able to dispatch them. Just like Plague Crawlers, their research data was used to mass produce Eliminators in 2003, during the events of the Umbrella Chronicles. But we all know that this was done to reuse assets from the retelling of RE0 in that game. Next we have the Hunter Alpha. Created by William Birkin, they are one of the few BOWs that Umbrella deemed successful due to their strength and ability to understand and carry out simple commands. The Hunter Alpha was created by using the T-Virus to bond reptilian DNA to a fertilized human embryo. While the Hunters had a 90% success rate in killing their targets, their downsides were that they were unable to spread the virus and they were expensive to produce. They have two methods of attacking, one being a leg swipe and the other being a jump and slash which if performed just right can decapitate its intended target. When Billy and Rebecca find themselves at a big church, they encounter a ton of infected bats. Now this is Connor's absolute favorite part of RE0, and if you want to find out why, you gotta check out our other Resident Evil video. The regular bats exhibit no notable mutations other than their aggression and persistence. Their use is primarily to be cannon fodder, to draw fire away from their bigger brother. The one bat that has experienced significant mutation and grown significantly in size. It's got 600 HP. Dubbed Infected Bat, this B.O.W. is another case of accidental exposure to the T-Virus. While many mammalian hosts do not grow in size due to infection, this giant bat is evidence that a bat may be a suitable host if more testing could be done. It has a wingspan of nearly 25 feet and is strong enough to carry a human. Centurion was an accidental mutation, but still had a dope ass name. Why didn't the giant bat get some love? I'm gonna name it Guano, and the giant bat will forever be named Guano in my head canon. Too bad there isn't more on the bats, because you know, Batman. Batman would never hit a defenseless woman. Funny, I don't have that problem. We only have one more non-boss enemy left, and that's the Lurker. These BOWs are found in the treatment plant area and were created in the same era as the Eliminators. These were some frogs that Marcus experimented on after he was done with his bugs. The T-Virus did its thing, enhancing the frog's strength and aggression, but, like many other BOWs, was considered a failure due to the extreme decrease in brain function. The mutation also resulted in a destruction of the host frog's sight and hearing, but developed a daredevil-like sense in order to identify prey. Each raindrop makes a sound the first time it falls on a surface. Just then, it's like I... 
it's like I can see again. And I, I just want to, I just want to see you. Here it comes. You are so beautiful. Beautiful, huh? How beautiful do you think this is? The Lurker has a massive tongue that is capable of impaling its enemies with ease. Its digestive system has also mutated to allow for human-sized prey to be swallowed whole, killing its prey instantly. Lurkers are cowardly by nature and prefer to hunt docile prey. At the first sign of trouble, they will leap away back into the water. Due to their tendency to retreat, there have been zero confirmed Lurker kills. Until now. Despite the abilities granted by the T-Virus, the Lurker was deemed a complete failure by Umbrella declaring that amphibians would never again be used as test subjects. That is, until Code Veronica. Here we are at the good stuff. The second to last boss that the player encounters is the Proto Tyrant, or T-00. What RE game is complete without a Tyrant? The idea behind the Tyrant project was to create an extremely strong BOW that was intelligent and could follow orders. The name Tyrant comes from the ferociousness of the creature. This specific Tyrant was considered a failure because it lacked the intended intelligence and was uncontrollable. It may also have been considered a failure due to its low HP. The Proto Tyrant has only 300 HP, making it the weakest boss in the game. Even with its low health, this BOW was not without its use. Its research and combat data was used to produce all future tyrants, resulting in the subject's nervous system deteriorating, reduced intelligence, and acute exfoliation of the epidermis. The proto tyrant was never intended for use and was scheduled for termination, but it was inadvertently released by the attack on the facility. While Rebecca and Billy never outright kill it, it is eventually killed in the explosion when the facility self-destructs. Last but not least, we have the Queen Leech. This B.O.W. was created back in 1988 when Dr. Marcus was assassinated by Umbrella. Marcus was taken out for experimenting on children and seen as a threat to the company. I guess there are some lines that even Umbrella won't cross. After dumping Marcus's body and his leeches in the treatment plant, the Queen Leech saw Marcus's dead body as a food source. While consuming his hippocampus, the Queen Leech gained Marcus's memories and began to see itself as Marcus reborn through divine intervention. I live. Over the next decade, the Queen Leech plotted to avenge Marcus's death. It even developed the ability to take on Marcus's appearance at various stages in his life. In 1998, it leaked to the T-Virus, causing the events of RE0 and 1. After seeing how Rebecca and Billy were able to deal with everything it threw at them, Queen Leech saw that the only way to defeat the duo would be to abandon its human form and fight them in this big, gloopy, gloppy form. Queen Leech has 500 HP for this phase. After defeating Queen Leech, it mutates once again and becomes impervious to conventional firearms. During this part of the battle, part of the roof is damaged and exposes sunlight to reveal that the Queen Leech is vulnerable to the sun. Rebecca opens the roof and Billy shoots at it with the Magnum. engulfing Queen Leech in flames as it falls down the elevator shaft. It is confirmed killed after the explosion of the facility. That concludes every enemy found in Resident Evil Zero. We hope you all enjoyed this video, and I know we had a lot of fun working on it. Be on the lookout for more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching.